and the president of Armenia, Amen Sarkisian, has announced his resignation, citing the inability of his office to influence policies in times of national crisis. The president who has been in power since 2018 was at the center of a political crisis last year that erupted in the wake of a war between Armenia and its long-standing rival Azerbaijan over the control of the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region. He was involved in a standoff with Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan last year over a number of issues, including the dismissal of the head of the armed forces in the wake of the war and amid protests that brought thousands onto the streets of the nation. Armenia became a parliamentary republic after a referendum in December 2015. Presiden presidential powers were significantly curtailed, meaning that the role of Prime Minister is seen as more powerful. And joining me virtually from Belgium now to discuss the development is a global affairs analyst, Colin Swinke. Good to have you join us. Thank you, Precious, for having me. So for, um, from an ex external crisis that it had with um, Azerbaijan over the Nagorno-Karabakh region, it, it does now seem that there is also an internal crisis within the government in Azerbaijan. H how do you react to this? Well, I believe that um, the immediate reaction of uh, a mortal, you know, uh, ordinary uh, people like us, is that of um, uh, surprise that um, uh, the president who took on uh, presidential powers after the referendum that uh, actually uh, made uh, <clears throat> the, the country, Armenia, uh, a presidential, sorry, um, 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 a parliamentary uh, republic. Um, so he knew he was, uh, you know, fully aware of uh, what the powers of uh, of the president uh, were because the referendum had taken place in 2015. He, he got elected in 2018. So sufficient time, one would say, to have known what he was uh, stepping into. So to cite the fact that. Um, his uh, presidential powers were limited, whereas the real power uh, was being wielded by the um, uh, prime minister. Uh, I think it's um, hard to uh, actually believe that that might be uh, the actual case. Now, mm -hmm. turn over to what he is not saying. And what he's not saying is the fact that uh, he's had um, a very, very patchy uh, relationship with um, uh, the prime minister. And so um, I believe that uh, there are reasons uh, to look deeper into that uh, area and to see that indeed the reason he resigned is because, uh, you know, he has um, uh, a political uh, crisis in his hands. Uh, he's finding himself more and more unable uh, to perform his duties. And rather than leaving uh, a legacy that is uh, really uh, too bad, he decided to uh, throw in the towel at this time. Mm. Do you also think that th this has been a long time coming? Uh, we're looking at the, some of the reasons we might, we're trying to read into the, into the situation and make, make informed guesses. Do you think that this has been a long time coming? He, he wasn't particularly um, supportive of the role that Turkey played in the um, Nagorno-Karabakh crisis. And to see um, Armenia signed uh, some sort of uh, peace pact, as it, as it were, with Turkey, um, or East ties with, with Turkey, Turkey. I, I, I don't think he was pleased by that because he, he felt like Turkey played a very destructive role in the, the, in the crisis supporting Azerbaijan. Do you think that that might also be one of the reasons he, he, he resigned? Absolutely. Uh, that points us indeed uh, to the fact that, um, you know, uh, the uh, friends, uh, so to speak, of uh, uh, Armenia, and uh, you cited uh, Turkey, but also let us not, um, you know, forget the role of uh, Russia in uh, in that uh, negotiation. As a matter of fact, it was actually Russia that broke out the, um, you know, uh, the ceasefire uh, that brought about uh, the ceding of uh, some of uh, their territories that uh, they took from uh, Azerbaijan, in, I believe, in 1990 or 1991 uh, war. And uh, the strange thing about it is the fact that he was not even involved in the negotiation at the time. It was a prime minister who actually, um, you know, was uh, at the center of, uh, of the negotiation. So he didn't like what happened. And of course, the firing of, um, you know, the chief of army staff, um, 
you know, in the middle of a war and very serious, uh, you know, the, uh, domestic uh, crisis. So all of those, indeed, um, you know, we're adding or piling up, um, you know, one after the other, that at some point we just felt uh, that there was no point uh, of him uh, continuing. Mm. And I, I wish we had enough time to talk about this parliamentary system like we had in Nigeria some time ago where the, 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 pres the Prime Minister is king and the President is the errand boy. And whether it is still relevant today, but I'm told my time is up. Always great to talk to you. Um, Colin Suwake, Global Affairs Analyst. Thank you for having me.